I am a nose picker. Well, not anymore. I don't touch my face anymore in this new era of, of disease. I don't blame and you, except I was just touching my nose. But I swear, right before we hit record on this episode, I hand sanded up. Like, lathered nice. and I, good. And like... Oh, yeah. That's the smell. That's the smell of 2020 right there. Welcome to Talk About Scary, the show where we do just that. Talk about scary places. Hey, buddy. I was like mouthing the introduction, and then afterwards I like mouthed a big scream like Goku going Super Saiyan. Nice. I wanted to like get in Good job. into it. You know why I wanted to get into it is because today it's my turn. And not only is it my turn, nice. but we're doing something we haven't really done before. And this is kind of what we talked about in the last episode, where we're going to start taking the show a little bit of a different direction. Is The motto is called, talk about scary places. All we've done is talked about places that are allegedly haunted. But what about just mysterious places? Things that can't be explained. Just other unnatural phenomena what about the bermuda triangle what yeah not the, the bermuda triangle not the bermuda oval the bermuda triangle it's my favorite oh. shape i like that shape a lot <laughs> it's almost not a triangle like one more point would be a square if you think about it yeah and you know when they talk about it sometimes it goes over a little bit and it looks kind of weird like a trapezoid, but <clears throat> that's a different story altogether. Trape but yeah, trapezoid. we'll call it a triangle. Anyway, though, I, I am, I'm, I'm actually really excited about this because there's a lot of places on the planet where maybe paranormal things aren't happening, but just as freaky and scary things are happening without the ghosts. Like, what's happening in the Bermuda Triangle? You can be, I don't know, eight years old. Everybody over the age of eight has heard about the Bermuda Triangle, knows something about the Bermuda Triangle. I don't want to brag, but I heard about it when I was six. Well, I mean, like, I heard about so, it when I was, like, one. <laughs> you know, that's just... I was, like, that's a just, savant, though. I was a genius. So. Just, it's not the same thing at all. Yeah. But point is, let's just, you know, okay, we'll, we'll cut a year off. Everybody over the age of seven has heard about the Bermuda Triangle. Everybody. There's and if you haven't heard, now you know. A lot of things happening there that can't be explained. I've seen the Bermuda Triangle talked about on so many shows that I cannot even count them. Shows ranging from Destination Truth to Ancient Aliens. Completely un unrelated shows. They, they don't even talk about the same topics. And yet the Bermuda Triangle... Me too. Wait, 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 wait. I'm gonna do it real quick. Hold on. Hold on. Aliens. Aliens. <laughs> I knew you were okay. gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, the point is, those are completely unrelated shows, and there's there's plenty of other shows out there that have done an episode or multiple episodes about the Bermuda Triangle, and it just kind of it, it crosses all grids, like. It kind of touches on the paranormal, it touches on the mysterious, it touches on aliens, it touches on parallel dimensions. Um, but I think at the end of the day, what's scary is there's an awful lot of people and machinery that's just gone missing. It's boom, gone. It's nowhere yeah, to absolutely. be found. That's, nowhere. that's the scary thing. I agree. Well, let's just, pardon the pun, but just dive right in shall we Pew! and we were never heard from again boom anyway the bermuda triangle is located in the atlantic ocean if you did not know it falls between bermuda <laughs> puerto rico and florida so um i have a map up you can't see it i might 
put an edit in there so you can, but honestly, you should probably know well, this. This is like the two plus two. Is it gonna pop up over like one of our shoulders or is it just gonna be the entire graphic? I noticed that, and I'm not dogging you on this before we get any further, but uh -huh. sometimes you just put the entire graphic up on the screen rather than just putting it over to the right of one of our shoulders well, or the left of one I'll of tell our you shoulders. why I did that is every picture that I had to put over of season one was because I wanted to put the video of you and I was gonna have the video overlaid, but you were like picking your nose. I am a nose picker. Well, not anymore. I don't touch my face anymore in this new era of of disease. I don't blame pain. you, except I was just touching my nose. But I swear, right before we hit record on this episode, I hand sandied up, like lathered nice. and I'm good and like, <sighs> That's the smell. That's the smell of 2020 right there. That's the smell right there. You Actually, you heard me washing my hands as, you know, right when we got the, I did. Uh, the I conference did. call going. True story. Yeah. He's lying. Anyway. I did. Um, I didn't dry him, but I washed him, so it's fine. Um, okay. The air dried. Where were we? Oh, yeah. The Bermuda Triangle. Oh, I, yeah. I, I might put that picture where you want it, but it, it, it forms... I lived in Florida much and I've lived in Puerto Rico. Mm. And so you're destined to live know. in Bermuda and then the triangle will close upon oh. itself and the secrets will be revealed. Not only the big things that you hear in the Bermuda, uh, about the Bermuda, tri Bermuda Triangle Bermuda. Um, have happened, but little tiny uh, watercrafts and aircrafts go missing all the time. Mm -hmm. All the time. And it's a huge part of folklore in those areas too. So I've got a lot of different things up that we can kind of talk about. Basically, the big takeaway from this episode is you should probably go and Bing Bermuda Triangle because we don't talk about Google anymore. It's Bing. It's, it's I've tried binging things and I don't do anything. I don't that like I how that sounds. In. I'm out the first picture that pops binging up. Binging things. No, uh, but all, all joking aside, Bermuda Triangle is something that you could easily talk about for hours. There are no exaggeration, hundreds of instances ranging from very small thousands, one man planes. Yes. To what thousands. we're going to talk about right now. One of the bigger cases is the USS Cyclops. Mm. The disappearance of the USS Cyclops Ooh. is that is mm, that's that's the one you got to start with. Ooh, right there. It's one of the Navy's. Mm, that's the one right there. Biggest yeah. fuel. Ships. I'm proud of you. <laughs> I'm proud of you. OK, wait, wait, wait. Sorry, sorry. It this marks awesome. the largest loss of life in the history. Think about this for a second. The history of the U.S. Navy in a single incident. Just completely... Pretty trippy. Missing. Just It happened in March 1918. The massive ship set sail from Brazil to Baltimore, of course, going through the Bermuda Triangle carrying over 10,000 tons of manganese ore with 309 crew members on board. And not only that, but they set sail on a fairly perfect day, to be honest with you. The weather was fine. Everything looked up. And there was nothing that happened. There's no record of anything just the ship was never heard from again it never got there it was never heard from an entire search area was put into action but nothing was ever found nothing We're, okay so I, what what time of year was this by the way it was march does it say march 1918 so, so it's not spring. even like uh you know inclement weather season in that no. area usually that's by the way that's usually like midsummer through like the end of september to november where you might see like water spouts, hurricanes, no. things and like, like I just said, it, it, the reason that we know that it was a fairly perfect day was because that was the first and only message sent by the ship uh, as a record. Uh, they made a note that they were setting off and things looked good. The weather was perfect. That's it. That's the note. So what happened? Hmm. I don't know. What happened? I don't know. Why, why are you asking me? I, well, you're the only one I can talk to on the show. I don't have the answer. No to remains of the ship or crew, any crew members, 
have ever been found. The That's captain crazy. and they've done like deep. By the way, you should mention that they've they've uh, done the um, what do you call that? The <clears> deep <throat> um, ocean sonic uh, scanning. They call it yards. deep ocean sonic <clears throat> scanning. No, they don't. But what do they call it? What do they call it? I don't know. I would bing Anybody? it, but I'm I'm too. I'm too far removed from Bing. <clears throat> I'm on a weird relationship <laughs> with search with uh, search engines right now. <laughs> Try Yahoo. <sighs> too many people from Google are watching this, and and Bing is like on my back. Anyway, not important. <laughs> Adam can figure it out. They they looked, and and I said that there was a there was a big an entire search of the area was put into action, but nothing was ever found. Um. The important thing, though, and I think I said the first couple words of this sentence, but I'll repeat the whole thing just in case it was overlooked by that that sonic underwater thing that Adam was talking about. Um, the sonar. They use. That's what it's <laughs> called. The word. That's the sonar. Yeah, and so they do. Uh, they use technologies used to explore outer space and the ocean include submersibles, remotely operated vehicles. Uh, and then I, scuba gear and you know diving and stuff like that. And then they have uh, stupid right now. <laughs> didn't know water column sonar. samplers, and then uh, sonar for mapping the ocean floor. So yeah, they used anyway they've sonar. done sonar over these areas. The, the pink. <clears throat> they haven't found anything. Bing. Bing. Which is kind of like Bing if you think about it. I swear we're not sponsored. Yeah. Anyway, um. The sentence that I've now started to say twice that I want to get out there because it's really important is the captain of the Cyclops never even sent a distress signal. Damn, son. And no one aboard responded to radio calls from other vessels in the vicinity. So if they were having issues, I mean, let's just talk about the Titanic for a second. The Titanic sunk fairly quickly um according to the james cameron film and uh other documentaries and historians have said that you know it, it sank pretty quick because of the significant damage from the the iceberg and then breaking in half and all that fun stuff that the titanic went through um i'm sure it wasn't fun but anyway um no matter what happened to this ship on earth it hits something uh something happened to it a wave hit it like it it didn't just go underwater in like a millisecond like why was there no distress signal why was no one responding like what happened to this ship in one second causing it to never be seen or heard from again like that that's that's the thing to me that is is scary is we'll never know no you won't it's it's not on I the bottom know. of the ocean. It's just gone. It's gone. That's that. See, that's that's the terrifying thing for me. It really is. Um, and so many things have done that, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Airplanes. You're going to do an airplane next. I know it. But boats, airplanes. I mean, what the hell is going on in the Bermuda Triangle? Science, probably, but we don't know what the hell it is. No one knows. So I knows what it is. I've got a lot of stuff. Oh, up. by the way, uh, to my oh. viewers at home, this is my cat Twitch. You have a, Twitch came over to say hi. You have a cat I on the show right him. now. You have a cat bombing. I have a black cat. My episode. <laughs> He's really cute. You should probably get a close up of this. Okay. Um, anyway, this is Twitch. Get your T-shirts. He'll be all over them. Thanks, Twitch. Have fun. Hmm. Sorry. <laughs> Continue. He just came over. That's like okay. Come here. <laughs> wow, I have... Sorry we're not in the studio. I have animals. This happens. I don't know what to to say right now. I kind of screwed the pooch on that one. I'm sorry. Um, it was a... I kinda, thought you said it was a cat, not off. a pooch. It's true. Mm. But, um, yeah. Just disappeared into nowhere. That's crazy. That's our favorite thing to talk about. Talk about crazy. That's the new name of the show. We've named it in both episodes now. Talk about history and talk about crazy. 
Anyway. Talk about crazy. <laughs> um, talk about science. You said you wanted to get into an airplane. So, um, yes. honestly, I mostly had boats to talk about because I think that that's uh, a little bit more interesting because... Um, more prevalent. I, I don't too. know. I just... Yeah, I, it's just... It's more mysterious, I think, that a boat disappears because I think when, when a pl if something happens to a plane and it crashes, it, it does generally happen very fast, so... You know, but anyway, yeah. Um, let's talk about um, a big event that happened on December fifth, nineteen forty-five, called Flight Nineteen. Oh God! Yes, that is right. It's a good one. Yeah. Um, basically, I'm just gonna read what this says to you. But uh, it was a group of five General Motors Eastern Aircraft Division TBM Avenger torpedo bombers. Say that five times fast and you win the golden ticket to Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory that disappeared over the Bermuda Triangle on <laughs> said date um, after losing contact during a United States uh, Navy navigation uh, training exercise. This was during training. All 14 airmen on the flight were lost, as were an additional 13 crew members. Um, Damn, son. Yeah. So uh, there's a lot of detail about this. There's a lot of information because there were, there were uh, tracking methods, and they were kind of able to pinpoint where um, the flights were you know lost contact and um there's a lot of different um theories as to what happened and and ideas and and everything but uh, long story short is same thing as the uss cyclops they just disappeared there doesn't seem to be um any distress any issues that were uh reported it just um it says that uh, they lost radio and radar contact with. And there's nothing. There's the no flights. wreckage. No, there's, there's, no. there's nothing. It's see that that's the thing that's scary to me is if there was an area on the planet where something happened, maybe like electronics uh, malfunctioned and the flights went down or boats stopped floating, which isn't electrical, but you know what, whatever. Just something happens that causes yeah. machinery to malfunction. Why does it also cause the people to not be able to do anything? Why is there no record of them uh, doing anything or finding their bodies? Or when the plane and cra uh, plane crashes and the boats sink, why are they not able to be found? You know, they've, they've been able yeah, to find besides that, many other corpses float. Mm, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't. Well, especially because that's the, that's the craziest you thing. You know, <clears throat> some of the things like uh, there was a, a flight pretty recently in in uh, for, uh, the Malaysia flight. I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head, and I did not think to pull it up. But there was a, a Malaysian flight that uh, went down, and people actually started blaming the Bermuda Triangle, even though it didn't uh, go over the Bermuda Triangle whatsoever. But it, it had similar attributes where it was just gone and missing and that was very very recent like in the last few years and people think that yeah, maybe there's that. some kind of like like wormhole connection um and there's just different spots upon the earth and people were literally blaming the bermuda triangle even though this plane didn't go over that area yeah i am um, it, it, it it's probably the creepiest thing that you could talk about like we talk about all these scary places we talk about ghosts and goblins and demons but that is some scary stuff and there's thousands of people have gone missing mm -hmm. and there's and, there's and they're not floating at the bottom of the ocean there's nothing down there really i think there's one wreck down there that they found but there's nothing else down there i mean kids have done history reports on this and science reports and there's all these theories out of what it could possibly be but nobody has a working theory that is actually a working theory. That's something that they can test and prove. And that, when that happens in this day and age where we can quantify everything and everything is such a, um, every, everything can be, you know, tabulated and there's data and then, then we just have just a bunch of missing dudes. Yeah. And airplanes and, and boats and we're like, we don't know. That, that stuff just happened, sorry. Yeah. That, that's all we got for it. 
So <laughs> there's not like a team of scientists telling us why. The the flight that I was referencing, I want I, I want to just name it just so that no one thinks I'm pulling anything out of my butt. But it was Malaysia Airlines Flight 370, and uh, it disappeared on March 8th, 2014. So it's interesting to know that it was the same month that we've already talked about something else disappearing in. Um, but they never they never found the wreck, and they don't know what happened. And I'll I'll get to it in a second. But there were. Uh, 227 passengers and 12 crew members, so 239 combined um, that are presumed dead because they never found any bodies um, with this flight. And again, like I said, it didn't go over the Bermuda Triangle, but people kind of associate it with maybe there's like wormhole connections um, in different places maybe. of the Earth. But because this is so f uh, recent, uh, 2014, like I said, they have a very detailed map of everything. And the last uh, radar contact was just looks like west of thailand and um it just communication was was lost and uh that was that and i remember hearing about this on the news and, and uh reading about it and uh traffic air control was all over it and and uh there was no report uh from the captain or anybody on board that uh there was anything wrong so again what could possibly happen in I, less than 10 seconds, let's say, that would cause nothing to ever be found or seen again? Um, or the captain to not think it was a big enough deal to uh, try to reach out for help? It's just yeah. it's a mystery. Talk about scary. Yeah. Um... Yeah, talk about terrifying, actually. That's three times. <clears throat> now we you can name the show again. Talk about terrifying. Talk about terrifying. Actually, we should have named it that from the beginning. I don't know why that didn't come right to the top of our heads. Darn it. Jeez. It's too late now. Yeah, it is. T-shirts have already been made. Ah, yeah, T-shirts. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Now, there are some wreckages down at the bottom of the Bermuda Triangle. There are people that have dived down there. There are a few, but the ones we're referencing aren't there. Um... And there's no bodies. There's there's just it's just just not enough to account for all the missing ships, boats, people. Yeah, there's a lot um, of missing, a lot of missing ships. It's crazy. Is, uh, it's really crazy. Nuts. And why? Even if all the boats were down there, then why the hell are they all sinking? It would make no sense. Yeah. No sense. None. Yeah. Commuter triangle sense makes. None. Got no clue. No. None. None. You got a you got a plane. You got a boat. Are you gonna sandwich it with another boat now? You got a big boat? Well, I, I big boy boat. There a lot of different things we could do. Um, uh, I like this one because it was another one again that was more recent. So let's talk about it. It's uh, a cabin cruiser named Witchcraft. Witchcraft. Yeah. I think they were gonna name it Hogwarts for the school of witchcraft and wizardry, but. Uh, that wasn't invented yet. Anyway, um, on December 22nd, 1967, a cabin cruiser named Witchcraft left from Miami and uh, was with her captain, Dan Barak, and his friend, Father Patrick Horgan. The two gentlemen's journey on the 23-foot luxury yacht named Witchcraft um, was going to enjoy the wonderful view of Miami's Christmas lights. Mm. However, after reaching just one mile off offshore, the Coast Guard received a call from the captain stating that the ship has hit something, but there was no real damage, indicating help to be towed to shore. The Coast Guard set off immediately, uh, reaching uh, Witchcraft in as many as 19 minutes but found nothing. The area indicating the location mm. of the ship was completely deserted. So they made a distress call one mile offshore. Coast Guard immediately left, got there within 19 minutes, and found nothing. Nothing. The ship was completely deserted with no signs mm. that the ship had been stranded or even that there was anything wrong. You know, I have to say, I'm slightly disappointed in this episode, not because it's not good, 
It's because generally I have something really funny to say. And I like to make fun of things. And you can't make fun of anything like this because it's unexplained. Like, what are you going to make fun of? You know? Yeah. No, uh, I mean, this is, uh, you know, I can keep going. The Coast Guard officials searched hundreds of square miles of ocean over the next few days. One mile offshore. Got a call. Got there within 19 minutes. Found nothing. Searched 100 miles around the area. Found nothing. And nothing of this. Square miles or just like 100 miles in a, like a. Just in a, in a thin line. So if it was like just outside of the line, it didn't get checked out. That's how the Coast Guard works. Miles, They're trained like a very south. thin line. No, but, uh, you know, 100 square a hundred. I'm glad I could plug you with a joke, though. Yeah. I didn't know what to do. Yeah, that was good. Let's have a laugh. Let's slap our knees. Yeehaw. I slapped it harder than I meant to. Did, did you? No? Okay. That's I did. I slapped oh, my knees. Yeah. I was too busy, like, crying a little bit. Anyway, <laughs> let me just wrap up with saying nothing of this ship has ever been found to this day. Ooh. Is it because it was called witchcraft? Was there like... No, that's not no. what it was. Yeah. Water witches. I'm just saying that's like the like wall. It's almost like there's a wall of the Bermuda Triangle. Like I'm one mile offshore of Miami. I mean, we talked about how one of the, the, the triangle corners is uh, Florida, but like legit, really? Like one mile offshore yeah and they absolutely. they can't find it they they search the whole area and it's just not there and again this is this is 1967 fairly recent times and this article that i'm reading was written uh and last updated on november 22nd 2019 so about a year ago and it very clearly says again nothing of this ship has been found to this day there you have it and i mean there's been there's been theories like people say that oh you know there could be pirates but if there's pirates pirates what are they doing like <laughs> what, are they do? what are the pirates there's doing? there's still lots of pirates in the waters that, that i know but they can't take a large ships what are they doing in, like in 19 ship. minutes? Yeah, yeah, the naval ship yeah, too. Like. That's the thing. There's, there's no distress call. There'd be something. We would have known something. And then there was another one, a meteorologist, some meteorologists, climatologists have said that perhaps it was like Did you a say gynecologist? From climatologist, oh. not gynecologist. That's for another episode. There's some haunted stuff that's going to happen. <laughs> Excellent. That involves a gynecologist. Excellent. Um, nice. But, you know, they've, um, they've uh, said maybe microburst or downdrafts. Um, water spouts can happen um, uh, quickly without a lot of word of notice. But usually, because their water spouts are tornadoes over the water, you'll see a hook in Doppler radar in modern times, uh, and you'll be, oh, that's going to be a tornado over the water. You know, they know those things. And so those have all been kind of disproven. And when I was younger, they said maybe the water, there's a maybe there's an underwater volcano or something that people aren't aware of, uh, uh, a fissure in the ground like a crack. That's Which letting is a lot all, of hot air up. It's all fascinating. There's just, it's. But none of that stuff has been proven at all, but, and none of it's. There. But even if it's not, if it's not proven, and it's just a theory, I don't care what the theory is. There's too much of it. If it was like ten ships and like two planes, okay, you know, I'm I'm willing to listen to you. But it's like aliens. I said, we're talking about hundreds or potentially thousands of instances. It's aliens. It. it I think it's ancient aliens. Great show. Don't make fun so of it. So if, uh, no, I like it a lot. By the fact, if they want to uh, plug us, now would be the time to do it. Ancient aliens, go ahead and give us a call. It would. Big, uh, overnight pictures. Big fan. Uh, overnight pictures. Uh, hit us up. We'll, uh, we'll work out a deal. Holler at your boy. Um, can you add one of those noises like the DJ noise? Of, burr, burr, burr. of course I can. I, I love that noise. But You're not gonna, but you should. I'm not. Because I, I like you to say things, and then when I edit, I'm like, I'm not going to do that. And then when the episode comes out, you look like a moron. <laughs> but You don't need to do that to make me look like a moron. Oh, snap! Anyway, <laughs> um, I think that's probably about all the time we have for this episode. But um, I hope you guys really enjoyed this one because this is kind of the format... Uh, we're starting to lean towards maybe get a little bit more serious talk a little bit more about some things that um, 
aren't just haunted hotels and uh, touch on some some things that are that are maybe bigger and more mysterious and not just ghosts but just scary in general so um, and we're gonna have some fun with it we're gonna have a good time (laughs) oh the fun's over (laughs) i ran out of oxygen (laughs) (laughs) that was good that was really good if uh, this, uh, if your current um, I'm sweaty now. Position fails, you can <laughs> you could you could go into beatboxing for a living. Um, <laughs> mm. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right now. All right. Okay. Well, you beat that horse. Anyway, again. okay. That's what I like to do. I like to find horses and I like drag them in and I just like <laughs> beat them to death. And they're like dead and I keep beating them. I don't know why. It's just my hobby. Here at Talk About Horses, we do not advocate the beating of animals. This episode is not sponsored what we do here. by dead horses, beaten by clay. Who said that? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, well, guys. That was, a great, that was a great episode. I liked it. That was fantastic. No, sorry, I didn't have I'm glad you liked it. I'd feel say. really bad if we got to the end of an episode and you were just like, well, that episode sucked. Oh, there's been some. You hear this anyway. guy? Anyway, guys, creep it real. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Keep watching. I promise. Creep it real, not to my people. Beat any more horses? Don't do it. On camera. All right. Maybe like in private. All right, creep it real, guys. See you next time. <laughs>